Yes, you can actually applaud. Yeah, please. <laughs> so let's right. lean in, right? Stop it. Huh? <laughs> you promise. And I'm not a girl. That's pretty obvious. Uh, so yeah, let's start with uh, ele elephant in the room. I'm not a big fan of panels that are just like about women. I'm sorry, even if I'm very <laughs> honored to be among with three, <laughs> so, yeah, so with three very, so. very beautiful ladies here. Uh, I mean, what's your take on that? It's always a bit uncomfortable to have like these panels because then it means that you're, oh, you're, do you look in? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable to have these kind of panels. I'm very it means, comfortable yeah. being a woman, just yes, to put that being out there. Being I, a love panel, being, I love being a woman, but I think, I, think we wanna be, I think we want to be judged as entrepreneurs and for the businesses that we start and happy to talk about the fact that we're starting them as women. Um, but most you importantly, can do that, yes. let's talk about changing the world and disrupting big businesses and sometimes men do it and sometimes women do it. Yeah, so because usually a lot of conferences I go to, not not the web, Geraldine, the web. but a lot of conferences I go to, you have the, the panel on women just because, you know, they need to have one and they want to kind of make an excuse for not having enough women for the rest of the yeah, conference, Yeah, definitely right? it, it, it has been a challenge for years and, and every year we get back, we, we get people uh, saying back, yeah, there is not enough <laughs> women on stage, where are they? And, uh, and it doesn't just make sense to say, oh, we want women. I mean, it, as you said, we want entrepreneurs, we want, we want to see the project, we want to see innovation and, and, and what's happening. Uh, obviously, I think there are many, many more women, um, and, uh, but it's, it's not just about that, it's about the business. Do you have a hard time actually finding women speakers? Um, yes and no. I mean, uh, uh, it depends. I, I think it, it, it really changes, and uh, it really changed also. I mean, just about the web and technology and innovation, because um, uh, technology and innovation is, is really now in our daily life. And uh, as soon as you go in in that field in the daily life, then uh, maybe it, it really changed for women, and and it brings women to uh, um, to those businesses. But but it's true in any business. So. Um, so basically, you're, you're pointing out the role of role models, right? So you are, you are three role models here. So even if we don't want to talk about women, at the, at the same time, the absence of role models is also an issue. I'm not a girl, so I, I'm just assuming. <laughs> I mean, I think... Mael, I, I, I look at I, you. you. You have to take that one. Like, I, I, think, I think a role model is not defined on the sex of the person. I think a role model is based on, on his leadership style, on what this person has been able to achieve. And I, I don't think that the fact that this person wears a skirt actually has any, uh, any effect on the fact that I'm looking up at that person or not. And actually, I discovered that I was a woman by going to these conferences uh, where <laughs> Everybody keeps asking me, how is it to be a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why? The good thing is that the so bathroom is, is always <laughs> empty here in the tech conference. That's the only place where women don't have to queue for the bathroom, the tech conference. <laughs> <laughs> so is that industry, and then we'll move on, don't worry, but is that industry, I used to be a lobbyist. I was, I've seen other industries, and a lot of people think, believe that the tech, digital, web, whichever you want to call it, uh, industry is like less sexist or whatever. I actually don't believe so. I mean, I think, I think that, um, as Geraldine said, that what we're talking about is consumers who want specific products, and often the end buyer of a product is a woman, and so now we're seeing more and more women create product for that end buyer. And when you are pitching to raise money for, um, to a group of people who could never be the end consumer of your product, that's a challenge. I don't know if that's sexist, right? Because there are many companies who will pitch and you will not be an end user, but it's certainly a hurdle because you can't get in the mindset of becoming a consumer. And we all know that in order to fundraise, it's incredibly important that the people who are listening to those pitches can imagine the use case. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the biggest challenge, but we're overcoming it because we understand how to use data and KPIs to talk about the use case. Actually, I think, I think it was in a book called uh, why women mean business. And it, uh, there was one statistic that said that 80% of purchasing decisions are actually made by women. So there's, that's a market, actually. Exactly. Yeah, right? That's a market. <laughs> Yes, no, yeah. Yes, it is a market. I don't, I don't know. I, as I say, I'm not, I'm not necessarily super comfortable to talk about the so, women let's aspect move on. of business. Let's, but let's move on. Uh, <laughs> since I'm not a woman, I cannot, I, I wrote out the questions already. So let's <laughs> right. move on to uh, uh, the next 10 years, so innovation. 
So you're running, you're, you're running a big e-commerce website in Russia, right? Yeah, actually, I run the biggest e-commerce. The group biggest e-commerce. I'm sorry. Group in Russia, <laughs> which is called Ozone, and uh, who did last year half a billion dollar in turnover. And then it's a bit like Amazon. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we have we have an Amazon part, but we also have a delivery service, and we also have a travel agency, and we're growing between 50 and 70 percent per annum. So we're we're growing fast. So why did you take? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There, there, there yes, come on, guys. <laughs> there are 2,000 employees behind me doing the job, actually. I'm just sitting and having nice conversation while they work, so... It's very nice. Yeah, you're, you're, you're French, right? Yes. Uh, so what, what made you make a move in, uh, in, uh, to Russia? I actually, I learned Russian at school, and then my first startup was in Russia just by accident. I just moved there because I, I wanted to improve my Russian, and then I met the, the first person who financed my first business. And I left Russia, I think, oh my God, I never want to go back there. Uh, I joined an American company, and then when they discovered that I, that I speak Russian, they actually sent me back. <laughs> and then, then Ozone came along, and I joined. Because I joined the, the reason I'm asking that is one of, one of the biggest things that will happen, I, I always make the, the comparison, like in the US, box office. If you think of movies, it used to be that the movies were making more money in the US and there was additional like, ancillary benefits outside. And now if you actually look at, especially the blockbusters, they're making much more money outside than the US. And that's a trend that keeps on going. That A lot of people, in, even here, we keep on focusing on innovation in the United States. It comes from the United States. It's still a lot of innovation comes from the United States. But that's why I'm also very interested. You also have internationalized Birchbox, right? You're not yes. only in the US. Yes. So are you, are you seeing innovation being going Going as fast everywhere, or do you think actually the U.S. is still as the lead in as it comes to innovation because of market conditions? We just had a very intense debate with France, you know, with uh, Monsieur Montbou, of the, the French <coughs> minister, and people complaining about the the the, the, wor the, the work here in, in France. Do you think do you think that innovation actually has is picking up everywhere or not? I mean, it's picking up, but it's certainly at different places. We, we are um, three years old, and we started Birchbox in the United States with the idea that it is much too hard to shop for beauty products, and it's a massive industry um, where you're really constrained to brick and mortar to buy a beauty product for the first time. Um, what we realized is that our, our company was really appealing to a global audience, but most importantly, our partners are global. Um, so we had to move really quickly into global markets because we have a huge ambition. We want to be the largest discovery e-commerce company in the world and there that's, was no time to wait for you <laughs> different we, model very we've actually different model. talked to each other yeah, before i want to go to russia <laughs> um so we 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 were fortunate because we were able to move quickly into europe starting really in france and i think that one of the things that has really benefited us is that there's not as much competition online on the flip side there are a lot of hard regulations about being here in particular that make it here hard meaning to do france Yes, yes, that make it harder for us to run the model because, you know, as what was said on the former panel, we are quintessentially trying to disrupt an industry, trying to invent a brand new channel that combines marketing and media and commerce. And when there are rules around what channels you can operate in and rules that, you know, exclude you from being a pure play, it means that we have to change our business fundamentally and potentially open brick and mortar in order to play, which is not our aspiration. So. Absolutely, and, and what you were saying backstage, um, I, I, I think you were totally right about saying uh, creating a startup is not, uh, is not uh, it's about consumer, it's not about destructing another, another business. Yeah, we're and not trying to attack an exactly. industry, we're trying to make something better, grow the pie. And innovation is complicated when, when uh, regulations are complicated. I mean, uh, uh, it's very challenging when, when you see those companies want, want to come to Europe and, and, and go all, all away. It's, it's, it's kind of a challenge. Is, is that why you moved away from France? <laughs> um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to ask. <laughs> no, not really. Um, no, it was, it, it was about being in the internet and, and, and in the center of it. And obviously, cen uh, center of it is, uh, is still San Francisco and the Valley. So um, that's why it's, it's not, uh, it was not about regulation. There's also an advantage to being early. There's an advantage to paving the road. There's an advantage to being a part of a movement early on where, you know, in one year of being in France, we have become one of the largest pure play beauty e-commerce companies. And that took us three years in the US. Um, but just because the market is smaller online. So I think there are advantages. And you advantages. have a brand name as well. Sure. I mean, I, I think a little bit that. But I think more so there's just less competition. Um, and if you're operating and executing well, you just have an opportunity. Not, you know, not without friction 
but certainly it's fun to be earlier and help define where the industry is going. So where is the industry going in terms of e-commerce? Because you two are actually in that. So where do you see it going? Um, I think e-commerce is disrupting right now retail in general, and that is a, a very, I think, exciting but also terrifying thing for a lot of people. People like us are obviously very excited about it because we're creating the future. I mean, in Russia, for example, we, we cover the entire territory, uh, so we deliver all the way to Kamchatka. Um, and we do that through a very dense network of what we call pickup points. Now, when you look at it, some of these people, the product we deliver there, they've never seen it before. They, they I mean, they just, uh, they just now have access to it because we have, uh, because there is an internet connection and they can order it, and we will deliver it to them in 10 days. Uh, which by Russian standard is actually really Yeah, it was good. about <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about Kamchatka. So I think, I think uh, e-commerce is definitely uh, opening uh, new regions, uh, new products for, for customers which never had this opportunity before. I think that's for traditional retail is going to be a huge challenge. Very few of them are actually right now managing uh, what we call a multi-channel approach. The U.S. are definitely uh, in front of everybody in there, but even there we've seen multiple retailers dying because of e-commerce. Amazon uh, doesn't have a lot of fan in the retail industry in the US, as far as I know. And so I think that's... that's but you're doing the same thing in Russia. So you don't have many fans in Russia as well, right? Well, the consumers love you. Yeah, consumers love us. That's the and point. I think the other really important part of e-commerce is that it really changes the opportunity for brands exactly. to meet their customer in a much more cost-efficient way. So if you think about the friction points it takes in order to suddenly be in a thousand brick-and-mortar retail doors, the infrastructure needed, the brand awareness needed to make it work, all of that completely changes when you are online. You're um, with an algorithm or Birchbox, you know, we personalize. I'm sure you do the personalization yes. too. You can suddenly be in front of the right customer at a low cost and understand who is your customer, um, what's the appropriate way to acquire that customer. So it really does create opportunity for smaller brands to find their customer. And it doesn't only have to be dominated by behemoth brands. But yeah, I mean, that, that, that applies to the US. I mean, uh, if, um, the, the reason I'm saying that emerging markets have a, a different dynamic still yes. that, compared to the US, right? Sure. So you've expanded in France? France, the UK, and the UK Spain. The UK and Spain, right? Mm -hmm. But you've not expanded yet in any emerging markets, not right? Yet. So the, the, these dynamics, will you, will you think, do you think you will expand in these type of markets yeah, as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're trying to understand things that really talking. matter to us, like yeah, you've credit, been talking, you can see like, that, credit right? like logistics. Yes. Um, so fortunately, if we were to partner with somebody like Ozone, we would have logistics so at least in yeah, place. But you're leading credit, into my, to my, sorry to interrupt, no. to, my next, to my next question is basically the problem you're having in e-commerce, at some point you're reaching a physical boundary, like mm -hmm. logistics, uh, delivery times, stuff that it seems like when you live credit in the US, you have everything. Execution yeah. is complicated, right? Yeah. Sorry? In, in those countries, execution is complicated. Oh, yeah. Much more. Even here, it's much more complicated. I mean, talking about, you know, the way that we run our business and the margins that we can run on with freight forwarding, for an example, to change the cost profile of shipping hundreds of thousands of boxes doesn't even exist here. Um, somebody start a freight forwarder, please. It would be so helpful. Guys, there's an opportunity here. <laughs> Well, I think Jack Antoine Grandjean uh, with uh, Von Privé did a lot on that uh, for all the all the platform and uh, and that kind of thing in France. Can you? I see you have a box next to you. Where is that? This is Birchbox. Oh, this I've is what Birchbox it. is. So this is actually the Birchbox for France. Um, the idea with Birchbox is that we personalize a selection of beauty products and we bring them to you. So we bring a miniature boutique to you every month so you can try product. Then we editorialize it, we teach you, and then you can buy everything through us. So think of us as a marketing company that generates new demand and the e-commerce company that captures that demand all under one roof. That was, yeah, that was quite the pitch, actually. Can you open it? Can I see what's inside? You want me to put yeah. something on your hair? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. We, <laughs> <laughs> you, you do have, have your for, for men, don't you? Not in Europe. <laughs> Not in Europe. Yes, in the U.S. In the US and it's very successful. We can get you a birch box for men from the U.S. Yeah. So for oh, the you American have a for men, men in the in, in the U.S. Not yet here. Why? Yeah. Because uh, are men in France not sophisticated enough to get that? I think men in France are very sophisticated. <laughs> you tell me. Um, no, because we're just focused. We, we didn't launch men in the U.S. until we felt we had critical traction with women. And we're saying that's just the way we do things. We probably will launch men if we feel 
that they're ready for it, but we test things first. We're a very MVP first kind of company. And is it successful in the US so Very far? successful, oh. absolutely. I mean, the fact that there's just less competition for us, and same thing in France with beauty, um, has been hugely successful. We've become a destination site to shop for grooming and other lifestyle items. It's also twice as expensive, and the lifetime of our customers is about equal, so it's it's been fabulous. See, it's not my fault, but we came back to the subject of men and women, right? <laughs> <laughs> can I t you guys had, I don't think you were there, you guys had a dinner last night, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Well, this one was absolutely about women. So, no, but the idea, the idea was uh, to gather uh, women of the industry and, um, and, and, and see how we can uh, be movers and shakers. Um, but I, I, I don't want to come back to the, the, this initial topic, but the, the, the point was really to, um, to see how we would integrate uh, all those innovations in our daily lives and how we can uh, do for the next generation I mean, our girls, um, just not to be on, on, that, uh, on that kind of male, women uh, so do you balance. Think, do you think your kids will actually see in a world where there's no that differentiation? <laughs> but we won't have to have to do these I kind of panels. Not. I hope there will always no, be yeah. differentiation. Yeah, no, of course. Sorry. <laughs> but I mean, like, not, ha not you have, like, have a, a panel which says, because I think even on the title it says uh, <laughs> digital women, right? I don't know what I'm doing here. But uh, so... <laughs> Don't, uh, do, do you hope that this will actually go away very quickly? Very quickly, probably not, yeah. because it takes time um, for the society to adapt to these kind of changes. It takes time to women themselves to accept that. It takes time for their spouses to adapt to that as well. So it will probably take a bit of time. But so meaning that these type in an initiative, like the dinner last night, are still something that's actually needed, mm -hmm. right? I think to it's definitely minds, needed you know, to yeah. change the mind and, and, and spread the world. That, that it, well, we, we, we can change things, but it's not, it's not changing things in, in our businesses only. It's also changing things in education, in minds, and kind of uh, um, put together, I mean, everything at the same level and not, not uh, splitting that thing. Actually, in the next 10 years, there will be 1 billion women entering the workforce globally. Uh, that's a study that's been made last year. So I've been living in emerging countries a lot, and this is something actually I've been, interestingly enough, I've been living in the Philippines, and the Philippines is a women driven country. So they have, we should, uh, you, you go to a restaurant and uh, they don't give you the bill as a guy, they give you the bill as a, uh, uh, to the women. So I, I encourage a lot of guys, all the matches, to actually live there for a while and you actually realize <laughs> suddenly what actually, you know, that you don't see every day. Anyway, coming back to innovation because we're, we have a, still a few minutes left. I, I, I want to see, I mean, we kind of touched like disruption, okay? But disruption means everything and in, in nothing. In a, innovation means everything and nothing. So I want to hear you, you girls telling me what do you think will be the single, maybe within your industry, the single biggest trend in the next five to ten years? I know we're not futurists here, we're just, just trying to assess what you think will be actually make the biggest change, the biggest impact yeah. in the next five to ten years. Sure. I mean, I think for us, two things that everyone is talking about, one is mobile. Um, and the other is personalization, and they actually really go hand in hand. So the more that you can have an efficient in interaction with an e-commerce company or an efficient interaction even with a media company where you're really being served the appropriate information that is relevant to you, um, it just saves us all time, and it's going to change the way that we think about spending our leisure time and change the way also that we think about um, just consuming in general. It's a huge part of our business model today in terms of personalization, but it's just the beginning, and there's so much much that is to come with all of us having our smartphone with us everywhere. Yeah, it's, it's definitely about, I mean, personalization and also, I think technology is, is, will just disappear. I mean, it's, it's now it's mobile, mobile and, and uh, maybe tomorrow we, we won't even uh, think about it. It will be everywhere. I'm I agree. Actually, I, I use always an example. I say, when you were, if you were thinking about the 1950, uh, I mean, everybody now pretty much has a, I don't know, a washing machine, right? Mm -hmm. It was amazing. Now you just don't see it anymore. Or a, 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 a hoven. The only time you see a hoven actually when you try to change the clock for daylight saving, like then you like get mad. But uh, you don't see it. So of course, the, I, I agree with you. It will disappear in the background. You won't. Yeah, see, it's you not about see it being connected. It's about well, our daily lives and and uh, and when you see Nest, when you see the wearable technology, when you see the clothing changing. And all this information going on and, and, uh, and coming back to us. I think it's, it's all about the people, but not the connection anymore. Mal? 
I agree with what Katya said about what are going to be the big trend in e-commerce. I think we in Russia have one more, which is around payment. I know it's it's a very hot topic, not only in Russia, but also in the US with Square and everything. But uh, in Russia, it's particularly important because e-commerce like us, I mean, we do 75% cash on delivery which means that you order online and then we're going to come to you and then you're going to pay us. And usually you don't going to use a credit card, you're really going to pay cash. And so there is a world, uh, an entire dynamic and, and industry being created around how do you manage payment in an industry which is mainly a cash, cash system. In Africa, uh, they have created some very interesting system. Whether this is going to be adapted to Russia, are we going to move directly to mobile where payment is going to be integrated with your bank account? It, it's all uh, it's all moving a lot. It's going to change a lot of the way we work because part of the reason why we built our delivery network was also to collect the cash. Uh, we, we didn't want other people to collect it for us. And so this, this question about how is payment going to uh, reshape e-commerce for us is crucial. And I think it's going to be not only for us in Russia, but in general for the world. Totally agree with that. Okay. Sorry, running out of time, and since I have Geraldine here with me, I cannot expand that. She will, she will hate me. So, thank you very much, Katia Agmel and Geraldine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.